Hey everybody, every boy, everybody, it's an Sky coming to you guys with part 5 of Crash Bandicoot Warp. Let's do Sphinxinator! Looks like we're in a Egyptian based homeworld. No little cutscene? No cutscene. But yeah, we now, now a lot of people forget these boxes back here, but I remember. Now, if we tap square repeatedly, we now have the Death Tornado spin that we got in the last episode. I almost died there. So now, I believe to get one of the gems, we're going to have to actually use it over here. Oh god, that is so terrifying to do. And, yeah, just hug the wall. There is a zombie, or a mummy in there. I don't know why I said mu uh, a zombie. It's a mummy. Oh. Death platforms, okay. Um, why did you sw He swatted away two of the lives, man. Okay. This is, uh, a little bit interesting. Alright, what's this way, then? Oh. Okay. Poo! Oh yeah, well at least we're back here. But I really don't think that there was anything special for going that one way. I never realized that that door actually crushes you. Oh. I believe you can actually go through those while they're fully up. Not halfway up. We're not going up, but... Here, mummy. Die, mummy! This is not your movie! This is a video game, sir. God fucking damn it. I gotta backtrack again. Hey, the door actually closed that time. Shit! I forgot there was, there was TNT in there. Hopefully this isn't like a death platform one or a uh, color gem one, because I think that the only color gem we have is red? Boink, boink. Let's go up here. I believe this is, yeah, this is where the spikes are. Well, the spears. So you can go through. Again, now we got the Woongaga power of Aku Aku. Um, that was a very delayed spin. Whoop. Whoop. Okay, and with that, we are now all the way back to the beginning. So I guess the one way was literally just for some extra lives. And a random checkpoint back there. Literally, there was a checkpoint before the checkpoint, so I really don't get how that works. Thank you, let me through. Oh, the door closed and I thought I got killed. I'm like, no! Now, that part over there is actually scary. Let me through, please. And like, the angle that you first come through this at is just terrifying. Boink! Hey! Right. I don't really want to kill you. Can you, like... Okay, it doesn't actually home in on you. Thank you for letting me through. Whoa! Hey, you can actually crush those. Well, not really crush them, just run into them. Oh, that was closer than I was expecting. Thank you. You can actually control the blocks yourself if you spin into those, uh... Like levers. Yeah, we made it through. This looks like a death trap of some sort. There are 105 boxes. That sounds like a lot to get. But I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. Boom. Oh, now we need the blue gem for this one. Okay, so we can't get the, uh, the second silver gem, but we can get the first. You know, the one for collecting all of the uh, boxes. Can you die already? Yeah. Death tornado, spin it up. Oh, well, I can't destroy that nitro, so that one's not really going to be much of an issue. Ah, uh, death! Actually, surprisingly, a large amount of checkpoints in this level. This is world... World 4? Yeah, there's four worlds, right? Yeah, a tiny, dingo dial, entropy, and now this boss. Which a few of you may know him if you played the other Crash Bandicoot games. 
because he actually is in number two, and then I believe he shows up in almost every other game after that, like the ones that actually have Cortex's main minions as bosses, like the huge adventure, and he shows up in other games, and like Crash Team Racing and stuff like that. Boink, boink. Boink. Oh god, I almost did the Death Tornado spin there, and that would have been bad. That's gonna destroy the life in there. Like, I know you could avoid it. But come on, man. Now, for this, you actually don't wanna. You just wanna ground pound right here. And that's exactly how you do that. This is a really easy bonus, I'm not going to lie. Boom. Let's go. All of these boxes are now mine for my collection of 100%. What? No! Aw, oh, man. Like, I believe that, yeah, the bonus still counts, but I guess in this game, it's, a techni it's technically a checkpoint for itself, but uh, I guess it doesn't actually save the progress. I guess maybe that's only, like, Wrath of Cortex that it saves it, because, like, if you touch it, yeah, it's, there's nothing. We almost have all the boxes. You, like, get out of the way. Ain't nobody got time for your shit. Oh, hey, monkey. Thank you. Boink. There. Now destroy everything, my little bombs. Yeah, we'll have exactly a hundred. Oh, wait, the nitro. I was gonna say, yeah, there's, like, probably enough nitro in the level to... to complete our box collection. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And with this... Yeah, we got the gem. So we never have to go back to, well, never mind, we do have to go back to that level. So many people backtrack to this level so many times in this game. Like, you only have to do it technically twice. One for the other silver gem and then one for the relic, but, yeah. And there we go. I believe we were at 33% when I started this episode. So anyways, let's do Bye Bye Blimps, another Coco level. Meow. <laughs> I believe the cutscenes are actually specifically in front of certain levels. Now this one, uh, you have to press R1, so it's like Call of Duty to fire. You have to collect all the balloons while taking down all of the blimps. There are only 11 boxes though, so it's not really that difficult. Surprisingly, this level is actually one of the easiest levels of this type in the entire Crash Bandicoot series. Fire in the hole, blimp! Like, it's so fast-paced, it's ridiculous, and I actually didn't want to hit that one, just in case. But apparently, like, no. Oh. So you can actually tell if they're hitting you, because they make that tinky sound. Okay, give me your wumper for a bitch. Oh, well, we're getting close to finishing. Wow, we took that down with ease. You can also barrel roll by pressing square and circle and stuff. So we got more than half of the blimps. Can you guys, like, get off of me for, like, five seconds? Like, they do a lot of damage when they actually do get to hit you. Just don't let them hit you. That, that's, that's easier than said. Easier said than done, am I right? This one will be really easy to, um, do the time trial on. Whoa, come off it, guys. There we go. Easy. Boom. Another level bites the dust. And 100% on it. Via except getting the, uh, relic, but still. Good job, Coco. Your level was really easy. Yeah. Okay, time to say goodbye to Crash again when we do Tell No Tales, our second Sea Doo level. There's gotta be a cutscene now, right? We've this is the third level of the world. I guess not. Because I guess they don't know who Coco is. A lot of people 
uh, including my girlfriend, didn't really know that, um, Coco is actually his sister. Like, a lot of people don't pay attention to that, because they've never really played the game, so they just see that, oh, it's a female bandicoot, so they think it's Crash's girlfriend. No, Coco's actually the sister. Tanya is actually, um, oh man, Joel's gonna die soon. Is that, Co Tanya's the girlfriend and Coco's the sister. Fuck you! I'm gonna have to plug this in later, guys. Probably after this episode. I hope it has enough. I don't get why, like, the controller flashes when it's about to die. It's like, yeah, we'll just use more battery life to, uh, you know... ...tell you that it's dying. Does that make complete sense? Baroom, baroom. Woohoo! Hey, you, can you please get off the box? Thank you. It'll be gone for good now. Yeah, I hate that the levels start getting wide. It's not that they get difficult. It's that they start getting wide. Man, I have to loop around to get that. Can you... Can you stop missing everything, Coco? See, it's when you have to go slow that it screws Coco up. Okay. Oh, there's two ways. Go figure. I hope they just eventually lead around to the same spot so you don't have to backtrack too much. Unless... Okay, no, the, the one way had nothing. Oh, these guys. The anchor tossers. Or, I guess anchor swingers. And look. Oh, yeah, nothing there. Oh, it's just a rowboat enemy. Okay. Woohoo! Perfect. That went beautifully. We have 60 lives, and we died quite a bit in here because I'm actually legitimately playing this and not using safe states or anything like that, so you guys can, you know, thank me for that later. And why are there lives over there? How do you get them? Oh, I, I see what little type of obstacle course this is. One of those things we have to go around and then just, like, duck and cover inside. But okay, I knew there was another one. That bomb is awfully close to that ramp! But we pulled it off. Man. And we're only just hitting half the boxes now. So hopefully we start running into some areas where there's a lot more boxes to get. And there was a shark back there. Well, we've actually seen the shark twice now. That's the uh, second time seeing the shark. They, they kind of home in on you. They're not super fast, so they're not the most difficult enemy. I still think the mines and the cannonballs are probably the biggest threat when it comes to these levels. That's my personal opinion, and I've been playing this for years, so... Alright, okay, I'm gonna have to hit the ramp from this direction now. Yep. You actually have to backtrack for that one. If you hit the water at the right spot with the right speed, you can get some lives in the water, but... Eh, not really looking forward to collecting them. So we need them. Fuck! I looked away. Sorry about the F-bomb. I have a hard time restraining myself from saying it. It just comes out. It's ever since I lived with my girlfriend. Like, I wasn't allowed to swear at home because my parents found it extremely rude, which it is. Don't swear around your parents, no matter how old you are. But, um... Yeah, like, she swears all the time, and I wasn't expecting her to be that type of person, because she looks like, you know, your sweet, innocent person, but then it's like... Booyah, bitch, I got a sailor's mouth on me. Or a trucker's mouth, depending on who you are and which one's dirtier. I'd say sailor. Sailors were pretty cool. I really do like the whole sailor type thing, you know? And it's funny, I get motion sickness when it comes to driving, but I don't get motion sickness when I'm on water. Which I always thought was kind of funny, you know? It's like, oh, you're, I'm not going to get sick via the water, but I'm going to get sick via the land? That sucks. I got both of them, right? Because I hope I did. I'm just gonna assume that I had enough uh, time to get through there, and I did, so. Okay, we're gonna be at 56. Hopefully, I'm not missing the next five boxes. Oh. Oh. No! I missed five boxes? Are you kidding me? No! Man, like, where are they? 
Where could they be? There's gotta be like a, a secret pathway or something. You know what? Now we're just beating the level. I'll get the gem on my own time. Nobody wants to sit through this level again. This level is long, annoying, and honestly not all that fun, so... Anyways, there we go. The level's out of the way. Not my best performance, but what can you say? It wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay, and that only leaves two more levels, and I believe the next one's a future level. Yep, future frenzy, and I'm pretty sure we'll have a cutscene, because I believe there's two cutscenes per world. So, Crash Bandicoot, we meet again. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex want me to teach you a lesson. Well, I've made a few modifications to my mechanics since our last encounter. So back off or be deleted. Are we going to a digital world and hang on a second, I wanna see if I can find my um my charging cord. Because you know I don't want my controller to die. And I did find it, luckily, so hang on here. Let me just plug it in. If I can find it, hang on a sec. Like the the USB slot I'm talking about. And okay. There. This is I'm not playing a disc. It's fairly safe to pick it up. And with that, plug in the controller. Voila! Okay, now let's get going. Yeah, so these future levels make their debut in this game, but also show up in the huge adventure. And I believe that's it. Like, the Game Boy games all take levels from the original games and then do their own take on them. Plus their own new ones, but yeah, they show up in the huge adventure and warped. Really do apologize for having to plug my controller in. But it needed to be done. So, the, yeah, we gotta deal with these conveyor belts and shenanigans like that. Also, I'm not really sure if we can get the gem here. I'm not sure if we have the color gem or if it's a death platform. But we'll see. So, we'll try and not die. <laughs> Once again, easier said than done, but eh, we'll see. Darn, darn. God, so I finally finished collecting all of Spider-Man 2099, uh, Volume 2. It's such a good comic, like, man. I do believe in the Game Boy game and Wrath of Cortex, I believe you get, like, a super slide ability. And that actually comes in handy more than you think it would. And I'm gonna bother with you. Okay, so, these things turn green when they're safe and they'll start to flash red when they're ready to flip. Actually, I believe all of these enemies and concepts are in the Game Boy game as well. Oh yeah, I forgot. He has the hot um, sides. And you just step on those and you, like, spin jump up. Woo! Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be a death platform or what. Man, all the Let's Plays I watched, I don't even remember these levels. Because just how few or, like, little I've actually watched them. Boom. Oh, it actually killed him. Perfect. Oh, hey, an elevator. Now oh, we're just going up. Maybe there's a checkpoint coming up soon. No, oh, this looks like it's gonna be annoying. They're out of sync with each other. Actually, not too bad. Actually, it's not half as bad as I was expecting. I really don't care about those one fruit. We already got, what, 80 lives? or Not 80 lives, 60 lives. 63 now. So for this, you just want to jump over and then trigger them. And I didn't check how many... 133 boxes. There's a lot here. That is crazy sauce. So let's hit this platform and go. Oh. Okay, you're telling me that I have to use my new abilities here? Oh, my favorite soundtrack. Do, 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 yeah, I know why it tells you to do that, because you can't get through the boxes otherwise. Okay, four left. Alright, let's try this. What the hell? I really hate the, um, 
the death tornado spin in this level, or like in this game, or in any game in particular, just because I find it really situational and very finicky when it comes to the actual controls. Boom! Boom. See, like that. And then like that again. Yeah, right, let's see if I can do it again. There we go. That is what I'm talking about, Crash Bandicoot. You did a good job. This will be the last level I do in this episode. I wanted to do more, but a lot of stuff that's been going on in this episode. I've already been recording for 20 minutes. Probably more by the time we're done this level, obviously. Might be less if I edit it. We don't generally have enough fails where it's too, like, life-threatening. Maybe Crystal. And I haven't found the uh, other gem platform yet. Whoa! Guess we wouldn't really need to jump on those, but I like to collect them. Yeah, this level's mainly side-scrolling. We actually get a unique ability for beating this world's boss, though. Like, I mean, it's unique in the sense that it wasn't copied until Wrath of Cortex, but the game was unique to... Well, actually, all these abilities were unique to this game originally, because the other games didn't have any abilities other than the ones that you just basically had. Oh! Okay, we couldn't get the gem here either, because apparently I missed that path. So, yay for me. I don't know why I'm so dumb. <laughs> Anyways, there's the crystal and no gem. So in the next episode, we will be doing the last level of the world, Tomb of Waiter, and see if we can get the blue gem. So until then, guys, stay awesome and enjoy some nostalgic gameplay. Peace!